This is the story of a man called Ichabod Crane and what happened to him one dark, dark night long ago in a place called Sleepy Hollow, one of the quietest places in the whole world. The only sounds ever heard in Sleepy Hollow were the whistle of a quail, the tapping of a woodpecker, and once in a while, when the boy went there shooting rabbits, the echo of his gun. But not many boys would dare to go to Sleepy Hollow. The people for miles around all believed that it was haunted. And at night, when the wind blew through the trees, witches wandered there, and spirits, and ghosts. Now, not far from Sleepy Hollow was a schoolhouse, and the schoolmaster's name was Ichabod Crane. He was skinny as a scarecrow, tall as a ladder, and he had a nose that came to a point like an ice cream cone. He was very, very strict. He enjoyed keeping the children after school on sunny days, and he liked nothing better than to rap someone across the knuckles with a hickory stick when they didn't know their lessons. <laughs> Like a big string bean He was tall as a ladder Skinny as a flea But he thought he was handsome as can be Ichabod Crane He taught in school He had one simple teaching rule He whacked all the children With a hickory stick If they didn't learn their lessons quick Ichabod loved Ichabod he loved himself, you bet. He thought he was the nicest man that he had ever met. Ichabod Crane had just one fright. He'd meet a ghost some dark black night. That may seem like a lot of silliness to you. But one night, all his wildest fears came true. about many things, but the things that he knew the most about were witches and spirits and ghosts. Everyone loved to listen to Ichabod Crane's strange stories. What nobody knew was that Ichabod Crane believed the stories himself, and they frightened him. And the story that frightened him most of all was the story of the headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow. You see, many years ago, near where the schoolhouse stood, two armies had had a battle, and in this battle, a soldier had his head blown off by a cannonball. Well, the story went that on the darkest, gloomiest nights, the soldier's headless ghost, wearing a long red cape, galloped on his black horse through Sleepy Hollow, looking for his head. A headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow rides through the midnight gloom. If you listen, you can hear, hear, hear his horse's footsteps loud and clear. A headless horseman of Sleepy 
Sleepy Hollow rides on a big black horse. He is dressed in a cape of flaming red. He's looking for his head. The headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow goes like the very wind. Riding, riding through the night, he disappears when it grows light. The headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow travels the countryside, past the graveyard and the stream, while all the people sleep and dream. Horseman of Sleepy Hollow never will lie in peace till he finds what he's looking for. His head blown off with the cannon's roar. Everyone thought that Ichabod Crane was the smartest man in the whole countryside. And all the mothers begged Ichabod to marry their daughters, and the fathers begged him too, and so did the daughters. But Ichabod said no. He had a wife already picked out. Her name was Katrina Van Tassel. She was as plump and pretty as a pink cupcake. But what was much more important to Ichabod was her father's farm. It was the biggest, richest farm that he had ever seen. And he knew that if he married Katrina Van Tassel, someday it would all be his. Katrina Van Tassel's father's farm is a very great delight. Especially for a person with a hearty appetite. There are pigs for ham and bacon. There are pigs for crown of pork. There are pigs for making sausage, so just bring a knife and fork. There are cows for milk and butter. There are cows for cream and cheese. There are cows for steak and roast beef, so just bring your napkin, please. Katrina Van Tassel's father's farm is a very super treat Especially for a person who likes to eat and eat There are lambs for eating leg of lamb, there are lambs for making stew. There are lambs for chops and shoulder, but if lamb is not for you. There are chickens there for frying, there are chickens there for eggs. There are chickens there for roasting, there are chickens there for legs. Katrina Van Tassel's father's farm where you eat until you hurt. There are lots of other things to eat when you're ready for dessert. When you're ready for dessert. When you're ready for dessert, when you're ready for dessert... Ichabod Crane had many rivals for Katrina's hand in marriage. Why, one Valentine's Day, she got 42 boxes of candy and 78 bouquets. But Katrina Van Tassel turned up her pretty little nose at most of the boys. She only liked the skinny schoolmaster and one other, handsome Brom Bone. Brom Bones could tame the wildest horses, <coughs> swim the swiftest rivers, and chop down the tallest pine trees in the forest with one hand in his pocket. Brom Bones was a blacksmith, and every day when the children got out of school, they would go to watch Brom Bones making horseshoes. The children loved Brom Bones, and he loved children. He wanted to marry Katrina and have ten of them. As for her father's farm, why, he never even gave it a thought. And Katrina Van Tassel couldn't make up her mind which one she liked the best, the clever Ichabod Crane or the kind Brom Bones. So, one dark, gloomy Halloween night, there was a party at the Van Tassel farm. There was music and singing and dancing and plenty to eat and drink, and everyone said that they had never been to a more wonderful Halloween party in their lives. 
We're having a party on Halloween, the finest party we've ever seen, with barrels of cider and apples, of course, and piles of donuts as high as a horse. We dance around because we're having fun. Let's do a square dance, everyone. Grab your partner, do si -do. Circle around and away we go. Now clap your hands and form a ring. A Virginia reel is the very next thing. Come on, in big time now, let's go! We're having a party on Halloween, the finest party we've ever seen. With barrels of cider and apples a ton, and barrels and barrels of fun, fun, fun. 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 Ichabod Crane wandered among the guests, thinking to himself, Someday soon I'll marry Katrina, and all this will be mine. Soon I'll never have to teach those nasty little brats again. Late in the evening, when the dancing was over, and the women were cleaning up the remains of the doughnuts and cider, the men gathered round the fireplace, lit their pipes, and began to tell the ghost stories of which they were all so fond. And just before they went home, they called on Ichabod who told the story of the headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow, which was always the most frightening story of all. After saying goodnight to Katrina, Ichabod got on his old horse gunpowder and plodded off towards home. It was midnight, the witching hour. Somewhere, far in the distance, a dog howled. The wind moaned across the high hills, and all the stories of ghosts and goblins that he had just heard began coming back into his mind. <laughs> the night grew darker and darker, gloomier and gloomier. Ichabod had never felt so lonely in his life. He started to whistle to keep up his spirits. As he passed the great oak tree near the sleepy hollow bridge, Ichabod began to feel better. Soon he'd be home. But suddenly, he heard a groan. His teeth chattered, but it was only some branches creaking together. And as he approached the sleepy hollow bridge, Ichabod's heart began to thump. Old Gumpowder started across the bridge. Slowly, very slowly, they were almost across the bridge, when there, right in the middle of the road before them, a huge black shape loomed up out of the night. Ichabod turned the horse and clattered back across the bridge. The huge black shape rode after him. Ichabod's heart was pounding, and he rode faster and faster and faster. But the huge black shape kept gaining. Ichabod looked behind him, and he saw, silhouetted against the moon, a horse and a rider. The horse was black. The rider wore a long red cape, and there on the saddle in front of him, he carried his head. Ichabod kicked old gunpowder to make him go still faster, but it was no use. The headless horseman was right behind him now, and then next to him, riding right alongside. Ichabod turned, just as the horseman lifted his head from the saddle, held it high in the air, and threw it straight at Ichabod knocking him off old gunpowder and into a ditch. The next day, when the children went to school, Ichabod wasn't there. He wasn't at his house, either. He was nowhere to be found. The only remains of Ichabod were his horse, old gunpowder, cropping the grass in the warm fall sunshine next to a ditch not far from the sleepy hollow bridge. And at the bottom of the ditch, were Ichabod's hat and the shattered remains of a pumpkin head. But Ichabod himself was never seen in those parts again. Everyone agreed that Ichabod had been carried off by ghosts. Almost everyone, that is. 
Brom Bones, who married the pretty Katrina a few months after Ichabod disappeared, just laughed when anyone told the story. He just threw back his head and he laughed and laughed <laughs> and laughed. What happened to Ichabod Crane? Where did the fellow go? <laughs> what happened to Ichabod Crane? Who carried off Ichabod Crane? It wasn't ghosts, oh no. <laughs> What happened to Ichabod Crane? It was the headless horseman One midnight dark and black Who frightened him away from here And he's never coming back What happened to Ichabod Crane? I'll tell you how I know <laughs> what happened to Ichabod Crane? It was the headless horseman but I'm not scared, you see Because the headless horseman Was really only me Who carried off Ichabod Crane It wasn't ghosts, oh no <laughs> It was really only me It was really only me Just about a hundred years ago, there was a little village close beside the Hudson River, and in the village lived a man named Rip Van Winkle, who had one of the strangest adventures that anyone can ever remember. Rip Van Winkle was the village handyman. He chopped wood, fixed wagons, and even built barns. He was a very good handyman, and there was plenty of work for him to do. But Rip Van Winkle was always poor. He didn't like work. He would much rather have fun and play games with the children of the village. The dandiest, handiest handyman that anyone ever knew. The handiest, dandiest handyman was Rip Van Winkle who with his hammer and saw and his chisel and plane Could build you a house or a bridge or a train Or anything at all you happen to need A dandy handyman indeed He did wonderful tricks with cement and bricks In the twinkling of an eye He could build you a wall that was ten feet tall And also ten feet high he could build cellar stairs or tables and chairs that were really the very best. But when it came to working, Rip just much preferred to rest. Rip, Rip, Rip and Winkle, his eyes were all a twinkle. When he put his hammer and saw away, and went off with the children to play, and went off with the boys to play, and went off with the girls to play. Hammer and saw and his chisel and plane He could build you a house or a bridge or a train Or anything at all you happen to need A dandy handyman indeed He did wonderful tricks with cement and bricks In the twinkling of an eye He could build you a wall that was ten feet tall And also ten feet high He could build cellar stairs or tables and chairs That were really the very best but when it came to working, Rip just much preferred to rest. Rip, Rip, Rip and Winkle, his eyes were all a twinkle. 
When he put his hammer and saw our way And went out with the children to play And went out with the boys to play And went out with the girls to play Morning, noon and night Rip Van Winkle's wife kept after him to make more money She made his life as sour as a sour pickle When he took the boys fishing on the river She was right in back of him When he played jump rope with the girl She was right in back of him and when he played follow the leader, she was right there too. But still, Rip played with the children every day. The sun came out this morning The sky is bright and blue It's a a lovely day today There is something we must do It's time that we got started So bring along your friends We'll all have such a happy time That we hope it never ends We'll play tag and follow the leader There are lots and lots of fun Hide and seek and hopscotch Come on now everyone And Simon says, and ring a levio. Come on now, everybody. Come on, come on, let's go. One day, instead of mending Mr. Van Bummel's fence, Rip Van Winkle was out in the woods playing hide-and-seek. He ran behind a tree to hide and bumped smack into a funny little man as round as a barrel. Whoops, said Rip, I'm terribly sorry. But the little man just smiled and beckoned Rip Van Winkle to follow him. He was dressed all in leather and his pants had brass buttons down the side. And on his shoulder, he carried us stumbled over streams and rocks and up, up into the high mountains that overlooked the river. Rip followed him. Every now and then, there was a sound like, like distant thunder. It got louder and louder. And then as they squeezed between two big rocks and into a hollow, Rip saw where the sound had been coming from. It was a most unusual sight. There was a whole group of the little men all dressed in leather with brass buttons and they were bowling. When he saw them, Rip Van Winkle knew at once who the little men were. For years he'd been telling the children the story of Henry Hudson who had discovered the river and the crew of his ship, the Half Moon. 
The story went that every 20 years, the ghosts of Hudson and his crew came back to these mountains to have a party. Rip never really believed the story because he didn't believe in ghosts. But here they were, and they were the merriest, jolliest ghosts that anyone could imagine. Two hundred fifty years ago we sailed from Holland shore And up the Hudson River where no one had been before When we made this discovery it made us feel so great that every twenty years our ghosts come back to celebrate. With a happy-go-lucky ghost ho ho of Henry Hudson's crew, we go bowling, 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 cause that's what we like to do. was called a half moon and was very, very small. It really was a miracle that we got here at all. The ocean was so mighty and the waves so big and wet that though we landed long ago, we're kind of seasick yet. With a happy-go-lucky ghost ho ho of Henry Hudson's crew, we go bowling, 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 cause that's what we like to do. The little man who had brought Rip there opened the stout wooden keg he'd been carrying, and the rest took out copper mugs and held them up to be filled with nut-brown foaming ale. Someone gave Rip a mug of ale and he tasted the most delicious drink he had ever had. But as soon as he had finished it, he fell sound asleep under a big oak tree. When he woke up, it was morning and the little men were gone. Rip felt creaky in every joint. Hmm. Must be the dampness on the mountain, he thought. But he didn't want to go home. He knew what his wife would say. <laughs> he scratched his chin and felt a long beard. He got up, looked at his reflection in a mountain stream and saw that he had grown old. Then he remembered more of the story of Henry Hudson and his crew. Anyone who drank their nut-brown foaming ale would go to sleep and wake up far in the future. So we hurried down the mountain to see what it would be like. The houses were gone, and in their place were large golden bubbles without chimneys or windows and doors. Outside one of them, there was a sign that said, for sale. Rip walked up to the bubble. It opened. And he was inside. The bubble was empty except for a big switchboard full of knobs and buttons and levers. He turned a knob and the bubble got larger. He pressed a button and it got smaller. He could make it any size at all. He pulled a lever and the entire bubble floated straight up into the air. He pulled another and the bubble settled back to earth. He pressed three buttons. Furniture popped up out of the floor. A table with platters of food came down from the ceiling. And the whole bubble was filled with the sound of music. Poor Rip was so bewildered that he didn't know what to do. He burst through the bubble. And found himself out on the street. He walked up to a group of children standing in line near a big, shiny thing that looked like a cigar. Where are you going? he asked the boy. We're taking the rocket to Jupiter for a picnic, the boy said. Last week we went to Mars. But, 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 but Jupiter spluttered Rippets. It's so far away. 
Oh, don't be so old-fashioned, said the boy. This is 1999. And the line of the children moved towards the rocket. We're on our way to Jupiter. For picnicking, it's quite the perfect place. And it is very close to home, just 390 million miles in space. We're on our way to Jupiter. We'll see the funny animals, of course. The Elahippanoceros and the Chimpanamaligeribraors. We'll be there in an hour. How jolly it will be. We'll float around like feathers. Cause there is no gravity. We're on our way to Jupiter. We're traveling along the Milky Way. We're on our way to Jupiter for a happy, happy, happy holiday. jolly it will be we'll float around like feathers cause there is no gravity we're on our way to jupiter we're traveling along the milky way we're on our way to jupiter for a happy 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 holiday for a happy, happy, happy holiday. For a happy, happy, happy holiday. For Rip happy, waved happy, goodbye as the children went into the rocket and it took off. And then he heard someone call. Look out, look out! A little girl with wheels strapped to her feet was whizzing towards him. And she stopped just in time. These are my new atomic roller skates, she said. They go up in the air and everything. <laughs> I'm not quite used to them yet. Of course, Rip Van Winkle had never seen atomic roller skates. He'd never even seen plain roller skates. They didn't have them in his day. But roller skating looked like fun. May I try them, he asked. The little girl took off the skates and Rip strapped them to his shoes. And in a moment, he was skating down the street. Oh, it was marvellous fun. Then the skates made a whistling sound. And lifted Rip into the air. He flew up, up towards the mountain that overlooked the river. He flew just over the tops of the trees. And then, suddenly, right in his way, there was a big oak tree. Rip couldn't stop. He knew he was going to hit it. And he did. He woke up in the exact spot where he had fallen asleep. He felt for his beard. It was gone. He didn't feel creaky anymore. He looked at his reflection in a mountain stream. Oh, laughed Rip. I'm me again. Why, the future had all been a dream. He walked slowly down the mountain. And in the village, everything was just the same. Even his wife. Rip sat down by the fire. Oh, and wished that he was back in the future with the golden bubbles, the shiny rocket ship and the atomic roller skates. The roller skates, thought Rip. The roller skates. He ran past his wife and into his workshop. He took out his tools. He worked all that night and all the next day. When he finally came out, they were strapped to his shoes, the first pair of roller skates that anyone had ever seen. 
Rip skated down the main street of the village. And all the people came out to watch him. Everyone wanted a pair of skates. Before long, Rip was known far and wide as the man who invented roller skates. He sold the idea for a great deal of money and grew so rich that never again did his wife go. <laughs> and as for Rip, he never had to work anymore. He could be found fishing with the boys. Playing jump rope with the girls or roller skating with all the children. We roll, 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 roller skate along. Our roller skates seem to sing a little song. They clickety clack over every crack, clickety clack along the way. With brand new shiny skates on our feet, we're whiz, 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 whizzing down the street. Lickety split, there's no time to sit. Lickety split, we go today. Glide, glide, glide The little wheels go spinning around Oh, what a wonderful ride We roll, 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 roller skate And then we roll, 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 roller skate Again, clickety-split, clickety-clack Glide, glide, oh, what a wonderful ride 